Hello everybody, so good to be with you. I love making these videos. I love that people are watching them. This is Yonaguni, this is fake archaeology. People like Graham Hancock say, oh, it's real archaeology because look at look at the straight lines. No, 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 no. It's a big crystal. We're gonna I've proved that in another video. We are going to prove this again in this video. And in addition to that, we're gonna see that these straight edges going down are exactly like continental shelves. And this is how continents form. This this, this is a miniature continent. And continents form exactly the same way. This is under the ocean. And uh, we're going to prove that. And that's Charles Hapgood. And I'm reading his book, Path to the Pole, which is actually quite detailed. And he suggested famously in the, the 50s and in that uh, Emmerich film, uh, 2012, that the, cr the bottom of the, the crust... So the crust is the lithosphere, but the bottom is called the asthenosphere, and it's, it's, a liquid, it's liquid molten rock, and it slips around. And I think he would suggest something like, um, because the, the crust is slipping around, faulting like this in Scotland, faulting on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it is caused by when the, the land stretches over the bulge of the equator whenever, it, whenever, the, whenever the crust slips around. And as I pointed out, we're going to say that these continental shelves, uh, all this formed instantaneously because this is crystal rock which formed like that. A continent formed like that out of solution. And it didn't happen gradually, this uniformitarianism in geology that, that's taken over, because geology is also fake. So not only is, um, is, is, is the Yonaguni, uh, it's not archaeology, and uh, these continents did not form gradually either. They formed like that. So, uh, because ice forms like that as well. So ice uh, forms instantly out of solution as soon as you drop the temperature and pressure. And if you do chemistry, you'll know that you create a suction here with vacuum tubing underneath a, a, a solution. You pour the solution straight in and, and crystals form like that when you drop the pressure because of this suction. And that, that goes to the vacuum source there. The crystals form up here because you've dropped the temperature, you've dropped the pressure. And yes, that's Yonaguni. That is exactly like a continental slope. We're going to show that. And you might look at Yonaguni and say to yourself, well... Clearly, this is a staircase. Clearly, uh, this is a lost civilization. That is quite apparent. Really? I don't see any steps. They're too big to be steps. They're random. They're crazy. They're all over the place. It makes no sense at all if it's a structure. It doesn't look like a structure. No one builds like that. But nature can build like that. And it's all down to these, uh, the, the second group here. They're called the, uh, the rare earth metals. They're also called the, um, I think they're called the... Um, they're called the, the um, alkaline earth metals because what they form a, an oxide, which a simple oxide, which is is basic rather than acidic. And that's an alkaline earth metal now, and you might recognize some elements of the Yonaguni structure right there. I mean, we see a bit of randomness. We see these straight, flat planes, flat edges. Over here, it looks like steps, different platforms, different layers. So nature does form crystals like this. And uh, this is another one, bromelite. These are quite rare crystals, actually. But uh, as you see, that's a miniature Yonaguni in action. And, you know, it's really interesting. The flood is, uh, is catastrophism in geology. Catastrophism went out of fashion with this guy, Charles Liel. He wanted to secularize geology. He wanted to change geology. And he wanted to say, look, actually, many of these things happened very, very slowly. And, uh, and, and his work paved the way for evolution because evolution was then uh, seen as, as uh, occurring in conjunction with geology. And actually, he, he's partly right, but not completely right. And everyone has, everyone has gone nuts and said he's completely right. And so when Velikovsky came around in the 50s and said, oh, suddenly... Uh, Coal can all form at once, or this can all form at once. People said, no, 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 because that's not what he said. But who cares what he said? Let's look at the truth. And he's partly right. This is banded iron formation, and this can only form in early Earth when the oxygen content was low. And the reason you have different layers of this red iron, which can no longer form like this because it would be oxidized immediately by the atmosphere, is because, uh, I, I guess, water covered it. Water covered it, making it uh, black or red, 
And then in assistance with biology, life, single cell life, a layer of red was laid down, perhaps when it was above the surface when it, or when it was in water, I'm not sure which one. When the water receded, black, a black was laid down, then red was laid down, then black was laid down. Then the whole thing was cooked into a, a kind of metamorphic rock. And, and these can be polished up, shined, shined up very nicely. And I'm going to say, because these things happen very... Uh, because uh, all these things happen very quickly in geology, why do they happen very quickly? And I've, I've made videos about the shrinking Earth, because in addition to the expanding Earth, the Earth should be shrinking as well. So why would it do this? And people have said, if you look at uh, Wikipedia, if you look at uh, even, uh, there's this thing called Wikiskeptic or Skeptipedia or something, and they say, well, expanding Earth is rubbish. And uh, 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 they say that because I guess it's a new theory and they do not like new theories. But they say, well, how could how could matter be being produced in the Earth? Uh, well, well, who says who says matter has to be being produced in the Earth for the Earth to expand? You look at ball lightnings, they change in size randomly and they are miniature stars. I believe they are suns, they are electrical and the sun is electric. This is a collection of electric suns around a larger electric sun. And when people discuss UFOs, they often say that there, there are smaller UFOs orbiting a mothership. Same thing here, except it happens very slowly, so we don't notice any changes. So we think it's a different phenomenon. I think it's the same phenomenon. And that's the sun. And why am I showing you the sun? Well, because of these two. Jacques Vallée over here, the best... UFO author of the 20th century and 21st century, and his mentor, Alan Hynek. And Alan Hynek was the project Blue Book, I guess, I guess Patsy in a way, because they, uh, they didn't, the, the people who were behind the scenes didn't want the UFOs being talked about because I guess they were protecting some military technology. Who knows? But they put him in charge and he was a, he's a very good researcher. He wanted to know the truth. And he said, most UFOs actually look like that. Based on his research, they look like that. He said they are round beach balls the color of the setting sun. In other words, they're ball lightnings. So these are everywhere. They're all over the universe. They form spontaneously in space. There's trillions of them. So why wouldn't they form spontaneously on Earth as well? So I'm saying that there's one of those inside the Earth, and that's why it's changing size randomly. And if because uh, expanding Earth is required to explain this, why were the continents together? Because the Earth was smaller. I mean, that, that why did they spread apart at a uniform rate? Because the Earth expanded. It's so simple. This guy here, he was uh, he's an Australian geologist from the fifties, Samuel Warren Carey. He he was one of the uh, the champions of expanding Earth in the fifties, and actually he was saying that expanding Earth can help prove continental drift. But uh, a few years later everyone switched to plate tectonics and they said it's only plate tectonics, no expansion. And that went out of favor simply because it went out of fashion. Another reason the expanding Earth went out of fashion is because of, uh, essentially because they, they say, well, hey, if the Earth is expanding, why are the continents crashing into each other, forming the Himalayas? And that's why I say, well, the Earth can shrink. That's why, that's why, that's why the mountains are forming. It can expand and then it can shrink. And you look at something like this, that is that is a uh, essentially a brown dwarf. One of those is inside the Earth. And th now they're saying, as of 2017, that the first Earth was an ocean Earth. So firstly, it, was, it would have been a brown dwarf. Then it was bombarded with water. Water took over the surface. First, first perhaps a layer of rock, then water. And now we can start to have continental formation. And I believe, as I said before, it happened like that. So what happened essentially was volcanism under the ocean is releasing a, a liquid form of rock, which then is, uh, it, it, it is, it, we, as soon as it hits, it, it's being, it's being bubbled up. And as soon as it hits the surface, boom, and as you can see, I've actually made a video before in which I've I've shown that that these all must be quartz crystals. They're all all these continents are actually super volcanoes, and they've bubbled up. They've formed like that. They might have been added to over time because crystals do are dynamic. They're like life. They're being added to and subtracted to from all the time. But they are essentially quartz crystals which have bubbled up on top of the Earth. 
So I was actually talking about that before. So because it, all of this is 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 all continents are essentially quartz crystals. They've bubbled up and boom, they've sealed up as soon as they've hit a, a, a pressure differential, which is the atmosphere. And and then you look at this. This is the snowball Earth from 600 million years ago. They've noticed that everywhere you look from the layer 600 million years ago. There are glacial deposits of conglomerate, which is loose scattered rocks, which have been pushed by ice. Why? Well, because the sun itself must have halved in intensity. That this because because the the sun must have shrank, just like the the Earth possibly shrinking. The sun itself must have shrank, and it must have it, it, its light could have been cut in half. It could have changed color. Look at UFOs; they change color from blue, orange pink they change all the different colors that a star can change so the sun must have done this this is the proof that the sun is actually not a stable star no star is stable the star that's inside the earth is not stable it can also shrink so in this video what have we done we've shown that the, the continental formation the shear edges are crystal edges that's why they're straight down they're crystal edges much like you get on any crystal like this anything like this they formed spontaneously geology is catastrophic because of the instability of the internal sun and well, we've, we've, we've looked at quite a few things i hope you enjoyed that video i hope that's triggered some ideas and i'll catch you at the next video cheers bye bye